Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, in deck number 464, we're going to talk about Shaku Inbringer. Now, this is one that doesn't see a lot of decks. I haven't actually checked EDH Rec to see how many decks there are, but I'll be honest with you, in all the years I've been playing Commander, I have never seen anybody have one. And But, you know, that may just be my small corner of the world. But anyway, so we got a 5-5 five, five flying vampire for 7. She is a vampire. Um, that does matter. And she cannot attack if there's another creature on the battlefield. During your upkeep, you lose 3 life. Yes, yeah, so far not that good, huh? Uh, she taps to exile target creature and put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on herself. That is outstanding. So, when figuring out how I, I was going to build Shaku, I said, you know what? There's a couple things here. Obviously, this is a Voltronish type commander because number one, I'm not winning with creatures that aren't her. Uh, if I want to, you know, even cast her or use her, so so I said, well. So my rule for the deck is no creatures. Folks, you're looking at the only creature in the deck, and that is the commander. So I got two things I want to, uh, two kind of aspects I want to go with it. But First and foremost, we got to kill creatures, right? I mean, we got to have an empty board. So... Well, t t besides her. So let's look at, I have, uh, this is, this is more or less a spell slinger, black, a mono black spell slinger deck. So, uh, we have got Vendetta. Now, I'm, I'm going to roll through these spot removal ones pretty quick because uh, we pretty much know what they do. They kill a creature. It's Vendetta. Tragic Slip, Fatal Push, Doom Blade, Walk the Plank, Liliana's Triumph. Now, I really like this because this is a, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Now, yeah, we're not going to have a Liliana Planeswalker in the deck, which seems like a flavor fail, but this is a Diabolic Edict for the table. So, I mean, that's... The, uh, See, it's Diabolic Edict. It's the same card, but better. Um, cast Down, Terror, Victim of the Night, Geth's Verdict. A lot of sacrifice stuff to get around that nasty Indestructible and Hexproof Shroud stuff. That's why a lot of it. Uh, the minuses are also for those Indestructible. Last Gasp. Dark Banishing. Ashes to Ashes going to exile them. Oh. Murder. Dismember. Consuming Vapors. Snuff Out. Tendrils of Corruption. Yeah, probably net some life off that too. Corrupt. Probably net a bunch of life off of that. And Corrupt can also go to the face if you need the, some of the last few points of damage. And it's a life gain. Those last two life gain kind of help offset the fact that, you know, she is bolting us every turn. Uh, profane Command. Now, I, I consider this spot removal because it is only one creature that uh, that you're killing off of it. Um, we're not going to be bringing back a creature. So, losing life, killing a creature, and giving Shaku fear is pretty much it. And Battle at the Bridge rounds out our spot removal. Then we have... <laughs> uh, I don't want to say mass removal, but... Uh, well, yeah, yeah, it's pretty close. Shrivel gives minus one to the board. Yehini's Expertise gives minus three. And if that's not enough, you get probably pitch one of your free... Uh, or 20 to three drop spot removals at anything that lived. Extinction... Just going to kill a tribe. Consume the meek, all the little things. 
Force of Despair, all the new things. Life's Finale, all the things, plus some more things. Cry of the Carnarium. I Blight Massacre. Sever the Bloodline. I know it looks odd, but you know what? It's been useful for me for those random tokens. And I'm waiting for it to happen. But those, you can have any number of the Persistent Petitioners and the Relentless Rats and all of that. It's going to happen eventually one day. I'm going to sever the bloodline, you know, 10 Persistent Petitioners, and it's going to feel amazing. I know it will. A wave of Terror. Now, this being an enchantment, it does stick around for a little while as long as you want it to. Um, but I do like it. At the end of your upkeep, you destroy without possibility of regeneration. That's what Barry is. Uh, each creature with casting cost equal to its last paid cumulative upkeep. So your first turn, it has zero age counters on it, and you paid zero for it. So at the end of that turn, all creatures that cost zero, i.e. tokens, die. So, And we're going to try this obscene nine mana sorcery. Uh, so in theory... We're going to have Shaku on the board. So copy it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone. So we'll get two instances of this. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. And if they can't, they lose half their life. Now this is... This looks an awful lot like a win con. If you get to do it twice or three times or what have you. But since that is not mana and our commander is not cheap either, let's look at our... Um, Mana ramp, if you will. Now, yes, we could put, you know, soul rings and mana vaults and uh, crypts and everything would make it awesome. We have a dark ritual, rain of filth, star compass, soul grail, cold steel heart. This is like the B string mana rocks, you know. <laughs> Fountain of Icar, mana prism, seer's lantern, and a really I'll, I like Meteorite for this deck because it can totally nuke that two toughness creature. You know, it, it doubles as a removal spell. And let's face it, the counter rule of thumb that I use is you want your mana rocks to be under your commander in CMC. So, I mean, you can drop this on five and it still helps you ramp up to play your commander. But here's the thing. How are we going to win? Well, hold on. Let's sling some more spells first, right? Let's draw some cards. We are going to Sign and Blood, Read the Bones, Siphon Mind, Succumb to Temptation, Live Fast, Painful Lesson. And I am actually counting the Praetor's Grasp as a card draw. Although it probably should be closer to, like, a tutor. You know what I'm saying? But it's an opponent thing. So, um, more than likely, we're going to pray towards grass somebody's, you know, fast mana. So, it is what it is. And, and of course, we are using the uh, Diabolic Tutor. If y'all will remember, this Diabolic Tutor looks pretty familiar. Um, a patron and friend of the show, Chris Thompson. Thank you, Chris gave me uh, a couple copies of the Lily Chandra Diabolic Tutor, and I was able to swap out that Diabolic Tutor that's got Lily on it, because that needs to be in the Lily deck, right, for this one. So I had this one extra, so it found a home. But now, let's look and see if... Congratulations if you're still watching, by the way. <laughs> um, but let's see how to win. Okay, number one, Dingus Staff. Whenever a creature dies, they're going to take two. We only have one creature. It's probably not dying as much as we're killing their stuff. So this is can be a lot of damage, especially because we're not the only one packing board wipes. Y'all know that. Uh, we have Rune Channer's Pike. It has first strike and plus X, where X is the number of instant and sorceries. Y'all know how many instant and sorceries in this deck? Whoa, you saw it. So, 
We also have Blade of the Blood Chief. Which we're kind of getting into that Voltron because she is a vampire. So anytime a creature is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, she's going to get two plus one plus one counters, which is way better than the ring of Zathrid for counters. But let's face it, we're playing with that for the regeneration as well. Yeah, it, it gets us incidental counters. Um, Umbral Mantle is nuts here. This is this is everything we want to do. Spend three, you know, tapper, exile a creature. Spend three mana, untapper, to get bigger, and then swing or hit. Oh, it's it, it's so. Umbra Mantle was made for Shaku. Now, Sphinx of the Bone Wand. Whenever you, yeah, it does cost seven. Uh, but whenever you cast an instant sorcery while this is out, you get a charge counter on it. And then, I mean, you just keep mounting up those charge counters, and every time you cast a spell, you're just going to dome somebody for some damage. So, yeah. Which is uh, not quite... Dynavolt Tower is not quite as good, but it's still outstanding casting Instant Sorcery to get two wing dings. And, oh, can't really see that because of the glare. But, pay four and bolt something. Uh, we've also got, because this is, you know, I mean, we're talking kind of Voltron Commander here. She is our, she's our one-person army. So we got things like Grafted Exoskeleton. I mean, she starts off as a 5-5, five five, and just using her ability makes herself bigger, so she feeds herself. So it's not hard to, you know, and this gives her plus two, so that's seven without any really trying. Seven in fact. And of course, Phyresis and Tainted Strike. Now, Ward of Bones is going to help keep the board clear. Yeah, each opponent who controls more creatures than you can't play creature cards. So the way the Word of Bones works is if we have Shaku, or if we have zero, because probably through the early turns of the game, we're not going to have creatures. So, and if we speed out this Word of the Bones, and we have zero creatures, each opponent who controls more so if somebody has zero creatures, they do not control more. They can cast one. But then after that, they're done. So most of the game, we're only going to have zero creatures. So that limits your opponents to just one creature. So, And then we got our non-basic lands here. Uh, push the air out here. I actually just finished building this deck. We've got Rose Passage. I mean, if there was ever a deck that wanted it, this is it. Uh, the Baron Moor, Desert of the Glorified. Now, I y'all see me running these quite a bit, and that's because there are times in on turn 12, you know, when you draw that land and, and you're like, oh, another swamp. Well, yeah, the odds of it being the desert here instead of the swamp is, I mean, exactly 1% probably, or slightly, not a mathematician. Y'all don't take my numbers. But if it's in the deck, the odds are way better. Uh, Blighted Fin, you know, hey, it, it's a land that's going to produce a spell-like ability of making somebody sack. Our obligatory snow-covered swamp, encroaching waste, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm not exactly certain why I wanted Reliquary Tower in here. I don't really think I'm going to have a problem with, you know, holding a whole bunch of cards, but I guess I could. And then we're going to try this one as our our last land. I mean, I have it. It doesn't come into play tapped. It, it, it does give us a colorless. But we can also spend four and sack it to put two counters on Shaku. So that that right there is, you know, kind of not bad. And that is the whole deck. Uh, Architect tells me that it is uh, the average CMC on, on the deck is like 3.08, which is, uh, that's because there's a whole lot of two and three drops. A whole lot of them. Um but yeah, 
I, I, uh, I kind of like it. I'm actually looking forward to it. Creatureless Black is something that is, uh, you don't really hear that much of. I, I kind of want to, I kind of want to finish that cycle. Well, it's not really, I guess for me it'd be a cycle. But stuff like Creatureless Green, Blue Beatdown, uh, No Burn Red, or No Spells Red. I, I guess No Instant Sorcery is Red. Uh, let's see. Black that doesn't kill creatures, maybe? I don't know. Just uh, thinking about stuff that just has no, you know, that shouldn't exist, I, I guess. So we'll look up here at the wall. And yes, I'm still wearing the same shirt because in my time, I've done all these decks the same day. <laughs> uh, I do appreciate y'all watching. Y'all let me know what you're thinking. Man, we're getting we're getting closer and closer to uh, to C19, aren't we? Uh, what is this? I guess today's the 19th when, when y'all see this. Or, well, assuming that you see it on the day it, it goes live. But, uh, and I think this weekend, I know this weekend out at the local game shop um, in Dyersburg, the, the Collector's Connection, he's having that, um, it's it's super cool, the Commander Weekend. It's a Wizards thing. You can go to the Wizards website. You can find out all about it. But it's, um, if you get one of the pre-cons and play it unaltered, you can put three commanders in the command zone. Right? So that's that's pretty neat. And there's prizes and little cards and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know. But uh, that may be a really good way. Because those decks, you know, could go either way with those three. So, yeah, they're, you know, if you... And that may be... That may be what I need is to get to get our hands on the cards and start actually playing with some of that new stuff that we never played with before. That way, we got three options. But I thought it, it was neat. So uh, to be sure to swing by your friendly local game store and see if they're doing it. Uh, but it's uh, it's pretty neat. But right, I'm gonna shut up right now because there's probably like two of y'all still watching. I appreciate it. Uh, but I think we're going to shuffle and cut.